Not yet. Yeah, there it is. All right. You see us? Yes. Happy right. Thursday. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. How are you all doing this week? Wonderful. Great. Those are two good adjectives. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Thankful. Well, yes. it's, it's the week people focus on love. So this week we are focusing on self-love. That's our topic for the night. And I am Cara Dunstan. I'm excited to be here with our good, good girlfriends. And anyone who's been following us, check us out. We have a new logo this week. So I hope you all saw our new logo. We're excited that we have our good, good girlfriends logo. So um, check that out and join us each week. Share these with your girlfriends and come join our conversation. So I'm going to turn it over to Bernita. Hi, everybody. I'm Bernita Bellamy. Um, once again, happy Thursday. Glad to be here with my good, good girlfriends, all these beautiful women here um, to talk about self-love. Cute. <laughs> good evening. Good evening. Happy Friday Eve. I am Quanita Tubman, and I am just loving being here. Like, um, very thankful for the prayers from my good, good girlfriends over the past week or so. Thank you. It worked. Hmm. Praise God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tanya or TT. And um, whew, it's been a week. I'm in a new state and woo, started a new job. Woo. So it's been a busy week, but it's been a great week. And I missed last week that I definitely needed some good, good girlfriend time. So I'm glad to join you ladies on this Friday Eve. Yeah, Friday Eve. I'm counting down to Friday. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Marcy. I'll go next. Hey, good evening, Marcia Penn. Always good to be here. Thankful for another thankful Thursday. Good to meet some mm. new good, good girlfriends and see some that we haven't seen in a while. So welcome. Glad to be here. Hello, everyone. I am Regina Clay, and ooh, I am so glad to be with my good, good girlfriends and chat it up ooh, about self-love. Oh, my. Can't wait. Linda, you want to introduce yourself next? I'd be happy to. Uh, greetings. My name is Blondell, and uh, thank you to Jeanette and Marcia for the invitation a few weeks ago where we talked about a core group of women that uh, makes my heart sing known as the village. I'm back uh, because I like the topic and as uh, someone who's semi-retired, I um, it's a lot of time for reflection and self-love is a part of that reflection. So I'm delighted to be a part of the conversation. That's awesome. Yes. So um, hello, everyone. I'm Jeanette Harris, and I'm so happy to be back here for another um, Thursday. It's a blessing. Um, just being with you guys is part of my self-love. So I just I want to put that there. Um, I, you know, I say this every every Thursday. We are not experts, <laughs> but we do invite you to our virtual living room. Um, and we sit together and kick it as good, good girlfriends do. We love on each other. We pray for each other um, and we have a good time. So welcome back to our followers and to uh, our new uh, good, good girlfriends. We're happy to have you. Yes. And Jeanette said we are not experts, but we did bring an expert in tonight. That is true. So, yes. So we're excited <laughs> about that. And um I'm going to introduce my BFF who joined us tonight, who introduced me to our expert. And I'm introducing Dr. Adrienne Morrow. This is her first time. This is actually not her first time on Good Good Girlfriends because she joined us for our New Year's Eve party, I think. I did. She was here for our New Year's Eve party, but this is the first uh, talk that she's joining us for tonight. So I mentioned to her the other day that we were... Um, our topic was going to be self-love this week, and she recommended our special guest who she will introduce. And I was like, perfect. And it all the stars align like they always do for our Good Good Girlfriends show. So 
we are excited to have her line sister. She's in the other sorority that I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> Say that with a smile. Say that with a smile. <laughs> yeah, the, you have okay. a little outnumbered tonight on the show, but... <laughs> It's all about the love. It's all about the love. For you all, so whatever. But anyway, <laughs> so this is my best friend, Adrian Morrow, and she's going to introduce our special yes. guest. Hello, everyone. I have heard so much about the Good Good Girlfriends, and I'm so excited to be a part of this village tonight. So excited and so excited also to introduce my line sister. Um, she is the deuce on my line, and I'm excited to have her as a part of my life, um, bringing a lot of joy and excitement and taught me a lot about love, not just about self-love, but loving others. And so I'm so excited that she's here today to share some of her expertise as what we call her online and we still know her as the love doctor. And so we are excited to welcome her today. And um, again, none other than Charmaine Flanagan. Yay! Yay. Charmaine. Charmaine. Welcome. <laughs> welcome Charmaine. Thank you so much. For joining us. Thank you all so much. I am so honored to be a part of the Good Good Girlfriends tonight. Um, so thank you, Cara, for the invitation. My last sister, Adrian, always supportive, um, who uh, is part of like my, my core. Um, and uh, I appreciate her taking this journey with me. Um, and I'm so happy to be here. I like to say that I'm not the sage on the stage, but more like the guide on the side or your fellow traveler in this love thing um, because we do it in real time, right? As life is happening, we're learning. So um, I'm excited to talk about my favorite topic, which is love and specifically self-love um, because this is kind of love month and we're getting into <laughs> Valentine's Day. So thank you so much for, um, for allowing me to take up some space here with you all um, and talk about love. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we just jump in every week, so there's no formal agenda. So we just jump in on a subject. So what does what does self love mean to you, ladies? Well, I'm going to jump first. Okay. <laughs> I will say that self love for me has been an evolving uh, a realization, and that for many years I only saw self love as eating healthy and uh, being phys physically fit, period. And um, having worked in a, um, a place for 20 years where, where really that's all I had time for, because as, as I've said and, and, and put to pen to paper, it was literally nine days a week, 72 hours a day. So when not working, it was about being a mom, a, a wife or a daughter, and there was no time for what I now realize only because I'm semi-retired what uh, is so vitally important and that is being still mm -hmm. and um, not fearful of being bored. Uh, I never had to worry about those two things for 20 years because um, I, uh, I had a great uh, fun life with the women of the village and my sorority sisters and um, different sets of friends that I'm very thankful and grateful for. But I will say to you that after 20 years, I have no regrets mm. because of the realization of what I've actually may have been missing from my life. And that is to be okay. And I, I, I don't meditate in a formal way, but I've adopted a practice now in the mornings for 10 minutes to when I open up my eyes to just be still would have never happened had I stayed in that formal, uh, former um, uh, uh, position. So I'm paying attention to my vitals and I call my vitals, my values, um, my interests, um, my uh, uh, what, uh, my life mission, um, temperament, activities, and my strengths. I, I, the spelling is out of order, but that's what I've, I'm now focusing on for whatever I do next. And again, I'll say it took me being still and uh, being very retrospective and introspective, which is really, I think, a part of self-love. 
And if that's not a part of, well, it wasn't a part of my world for 20 years, and now I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I so agree. Um, I think you touched on a lot, Blondell, um, and your story, I guess, mimics some of my story because um, for most of my life, I stay busy, 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 busy. Um, chairperson of this, lead that, um, work, um, community engagement, fill in my time, which again, I loved and was great, but that was at certain times, it was um, a sacrifice or a detriment to my own health. And I wasn't practicing self-love because I wasn't really taking care of me to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. So it took me to, um, to be still and some life um, obstacles and challenges that made me be still <laughs> to um, do a, a lot of deep self-reflection and to understand that taking care of me first and foremost wasn't me being selfish, telling people no is um, something I've been really, 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 because I was the yes person. Can you do this? Yes. Can you do that? Yes. Can you do this? Yes. I will do that. And had a hard time telling people no. So no has been a big, big factor the last couple of years of me practicing my self-love and self-care. Um, and then I've even elevated it because then I would say no, but I thought I had to explain myself. Oh, yeah. no, I can't because, I can't because. So now I'm practicing self-love and no is with no explanation. It's no. <laughs> um, and so, and you know, for me, that was difficult because it didn't feel right in my core because that well, I wasn't used to that. But it feels really good these days mm. to tell people no mm. um, with a smile. Um, because I know that it is for my good and, um, that can take, you know, when, when we're the, you know, women doing all of that, we got all these obligations and we're doing all these great things. It's great, but it takes a toll on us. Um, and, you know, as being wives and daughters and, um, sisters and friends and working and, um, all those titles that we, we carry, it, it, it can get heavy at times. So I think in this season, hence why I made a big life change and moved to a different oh, wow. location. Good for you. Moved from Maryland to South Carolina because wow. I was doing some self-reflection about what I wanted in this next chapter of my life. Mm. Understanding that there are more days behind me that there are in front of me. And so how do you want to spend that time, Tanya? Mm. how I what I asked myself and um and that's mm. when I made some different choices and 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 made a, a plot or plan for um you know what the next chapter would look like and so that felt so good I felt like that was just some deep self-love um that I was exhibiting over the last two days two years when I was trying to figure out you know and again, what next? what's next? And no regrets. I mean, I felt I feel like everything that we do um, when we're doing it um, for the betterment of other people, it can be a good thing. It's just having that balance and understanding when we have to kind of step back sometimes and mm -hmm. and do some self preservation um, and some and that deep self love. And I think we, I, I know for me. I, it was always a challenge, but I'm so much better at it these days. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Still <laughs> evolving. I'm not where I want to right. be. Of course. Definitely not where I want to be, but I'm de I've definitely um, come a long way. That's but off. I think too, like to what you just said, Tanya and Blondell, the word evolving as it relates to self-care. Mm -hmm. I think you know, as different circumstances change in your life. So when your children are younger, for those of us that are mothers, you know, it requires to be a little more selfless, right? Mm -hmm. Or at least that's what we think, right? Because yep. you really are supposed to put the oxygen mask on yourself first, <laughs> right? That's what I, but very rarely, you know, as black women, period, do we do that. Right. Um, and so I think that that 
self-love looks different to you as you become more self-aware of what you need. Yes. Um, you know, as your children grow, as, you know, circumstances in your life change, then you, your priorities change and self-love looks different. Um, and we, you know, I think we're in a constant state of, of learning how to love ourselves too. Mm. Um, that's a, that's a great, 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 great um, tool to have in your mind, Jeanette. Thank you for reminding me of that. Um, because love the way God loves us is unimaginable. Mm -hmm. It's so unimaginable. So to continue this journey of self-love is continuing, like um, Blondell said, to be still and be quiet and let God love you for who mm. you really, really are. Yeah. And then mm. you learn how to take that self-love and love self. You can flip it around and really learn to love yourself in your flaws, in your mm. imperfections, in your shortcomings, mm. in your, your good, in your bad. And then you can not only um, meditate in that Blondell, like you said, but you can start to affirm it in yourself. I am good soul. I am love. I am a child of God. I am beautiful. And the more and more you practice that, the more and more, like you said, those that you can grow into this real self-love because it's going to take until we leave this earth. And mm -hmm. then you can in turn um, love others. And then for me personally, I I'm going to go to self-love and um, the way it, it evolved for me. Self-love to me was impressing other people oh I gotta look nice for this person I gotta do something nice for this person I gotta you know act this way around this person I gotta you know smile at this person and I had to evolve and say no I, I gotta impress me I gotta impress me I gotta impress God God's the number one person that I need to impress everybody else it don't even matter you know yeah we got the compliments yeah we we all do love compliments don't get it wrong yes but the, the real talk of the matter is, let me learn how to believe it within me first. I got to believe it for me because when even if somebody else says it to me, it really doesn't, it doesn't matter. It really, you know, it really doesn't mean anything until I know what it really means in me to love yeah. me, to not try to be perfect, to not try to be this um, persona that impresses other people. But what does it look like for me? What does it feel like for me? And forget everybody else and what everybody else say. And again, like I said, it goes all into, you know, God's unconditional, unfathomable love for me. Uh, um, so I'm learning that. I'm learning to let God love me the way mm. he, he has created me to be um, fearfully and wonderfully made. Wow. Um, that's, that's my part. Mm. Yeah. I thought over the week about what self-love means to me because I don't think about it. I, I, you know, as Tanya said, we, we do so much for so many other people, carry so many hats. And I too, am still one of those people that are like, yes, 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 yes. Um, I start to say no, but I still, I st I'm not quite where you are, big sis, because I still feel that little pit where I say no. And I feel like, mm, I got to try. And I feel guilty when I don't. And then I still end up maybe doing a little bit of something. And um, but I thought about some of the things that I enjoy doing. Um, I took up running two years ago. Um, I do that. I put my music on. I love a certain 80s, 90s music, and I run and I do that. I want a bubble bath every couple of weeks with candles all the way around. And, and a lot of the things I like to do. Is all I, sorry. Um, I figured out that that's a part of my self love. Like, Okay. And then because I grew up sort of like this shy person and everything, I look in the mirror now and I'd be like, oh, she's cute. Yeah. All right. I like who she is, you know? <laughs> so it took me a long time to get to that part. And those who knew me back in high school knows that. <laughs> um, but I, I have grown into it to love who I am, um, all my flaws and imperfections and also all my greatness. So 
I'm going to continue to do my music stuff, my bubble baths and my running when the weather gets back. Nice. Um, I do it on certain days, not on the icy days. Tanya, you're missing the snow. You're missing the snow. <laughs> I'm not really missing it. We didn't had to shovel out <laughs> twice. <laughs> I want to tell you, I've been 70 degree weather. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we know Bernita been missing it. Right <laughs> So that's, that's how I, 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 I'm glad to be in a little self-love. I even went, I was like, wait a minute, it's Valentine's Day. Let me go put something red on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it just made me feel better to put something red on and put a little neck, um, um, a, a little neck candy on as Miss Regina calls it. So. It's beautiful too. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I'll jump in here and say that I agree with everything that each one of you has said in your uh, definition of self-love. And as I was listening to it, it just kind of reminded me of our discussion around self-care. Mm -hmm. um, you know, these kind of tie into each other, self-care, self-love. Um, but I will say that personally, my form of self-love is number one, I really like myself. So I start there. I like myself. I as long as I like myself, I can, I'm, I'm able to love myself a little better. So um, I try to stay in that mode of always being likable to myself. Um, but I also think that um, with self-love, I liked the point that Jeanette made. Well, I'm not sure you were making it in this way, but I believe in putting my air mask on first and um, making sure that I take care of myself first so that I can feel free to take care of others. And so I try to stay in that mode as well. So um, I, you know, I used to be better at no, I'm, I'm going back to being better at no again, um, saying no when I need to, but, um, but that's my form of self-love is making sure that I take care of myself first and then I can take care of everyone else because as you mothers know, I'm not a mother, but as you mothers know, you give of yourself and then you have very little to give back. I mean, you give everyone else of you and then you have very little to give to yourself. So um, I, I had the luxury of taking care of myself um, and not having to take care of children, but I just try to always make sure I remember to do that. And that's my form of self love. so. Well, I, I just wanted to jump in because I use that analogy all the time about putting the face mask on yourself. And I remember the first time I flew and when they said that, I was like, I'm <laughs> gonna save my children before I'm gonna save myself, right? And, and just think about that. That's, that was my mindset. It's like, I'm gonna save my children before I save myself. But if I'm not well, and if I'm not happy, I can't save my children. That's exactly Love right. themselves mm -hmm. until I, you know, until I'm healthy, until I'm well. Um, exactly and I'm a single right. mom. And I know that there are a lot of single moms out there that put their all into their children, right? Like mm -hmm. every day, all day, like, you know, and I do love my children, put my all into my children. But I do take some time. Um, it's interesting because I'm, I'm doing a panel discussion with um, a girlfriend of mine. And one of the things she talked about is taking an hour a week, just one hour a week, where you close out everybody, mm -hmm. whether you're married, whether you have children, whether you're just like, I'm doing me for this one hour a week. And I thought to myself, I was like, Woo, one hour a week. But sometimes a lot of people don't get that. Mm -hmm. And then the other, the only other thing that I wanted to say, because I think several other people said that about self-love, when you love yourself, it opens you up. I'm a, I'm a set Charmaine up for right now, what I'm about to say. When you <laughs> love yourself, you are able to love somebody else. Yeah, oh, for sure. You Absolutely. cannot, you cannot. You know, you've got to love yourself 
before you can give love to someone else. Exactly. And that's that's exactly. what I absolutely believe. I agree. I know that. Charmaine can right. go into much detail right. about that, but the anyway. last the last thing I want to say is we just need to keep emphasizing that self love is not selfish. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. I agree with that. Amen. It's always seen, you know, it, it's perceived as being selfish, but it's not. It goes back, it really goes to your point, Regina, that you have to love yourself first to open yourself up to love others and to be loved. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, right. Um, I, I, I agree. I thinking about what Regina said, you know, my mother always says, you don't take care of yourself first then how can you help and take care of everybody else? So that's back to putting that face mask on first. Yeah. Um, she's like, you, you, know, you do things for everybody else, but you have to do for yourself first. Because mm -hmm. if you are not healthy and well, yeah. you know, in all areas of your life, then how can you extend yourself? So back to if you don't love yourself first. And for me, sometimes, self, sometimes it's a little small thing. Sometimes mm -hmm. it, for me, it may be just slowing down. Instead mm -hmm. of taking the expressway, let me take the drive and enjoy a slower pace mm -hmm. and enjoy the scenery. Yes. When I know there's less traffic, so I'm enjoying the quiet. So sometimes mm -hmm. it's just, it's small things. It's maybe, uh, I should have taken that whole hour, but maybe I took 30 <laughs> minutes and just at red. I know I need the hour. I just think I need so much more than an hour. Yes. But I, if I'm not taking an hour, let me at least take some time. Um, as Blondell said, you know, starting to meditate, just 10 minutes of a day, you think this like, like when is this gonna be over? And at the same time, it's only 10 minutes. <laughs> You know, so um, it is absolutely about evolving. You know, I'm not where I was, you know, not where I want to be, but understanding being in a good space. Q, I don't have a problem saying, no, I've gotten to the point where, you know what, that just doesn't work for me. It's not happening. Not feeling it. You're not okay with that. Okay, but I, you know, so, because. We, I think we've talked about that before too, about the ability to say no. I mentioned before, I used to have a little no sticky on my um, computer because like I had to see no. I don't have to see it anymore um, to, to be okay with it. You know, and it's not, and it really is, it becomes about self-survival and, and doing things that are okay for your spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and if you are a loving person, people will see that and know that and understand that. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to jump in real quick. If those people don't know me, I am a TV junkie. And so I'm always watching different shows. And one of the shows that I watch sometimes um, is RuPaul's Drag Race. And it's just one of those ones like mindless. You just watch it, you laugh. But at the end, he says, if you don't love yourself, how the heck are you going to love somebody else? And so that always like hits me like, oh, at, I watched this whole show just to hear that just to hear that affirmation for me, if I don't love myself, how the heck am I gonna love somebody else? And so Regina, you hit the nail on the head for me when you said that. And as our lives are changing and my, my life personally is having some twists and turns, I really have appreciated who I am. I'm, like Cara said, I like myself. I like myself, I like where I am, I like my house. You know, I like the time that I spend, you know, reading or the time I spend um, watching TV or, or reading a book. It's just that time that I spend that I'm learning more and more to like who I am and to appreciate who I am and the gifts that I have and the things that I can offer others. So I just, when Regina said that, that hit me like, yep, that's it. That is it when you got to be able to love yourself so you can love somebody else. So, uh, Charmaine, how did we do? <laughs> what I love it. How great would you do? <laughs> how did we do? I, I love it. And, uh, you know, it, it had me thinking. I, had a, I have a lot to say, but I don't know what you, what you all want me to say or, you know. Um, Whatever you want to say. We're open. Okay. <laughs> so just, to, just uh, maybe I'll step back a second. And um, I think for me, um, I've been on this like intentional journey of self-love, meaning learning how to do it and understanding it more from a deeper place for 10 years, almost 11 years now. It's like making it my business to really dive into it. Um, and it happened while I was in school in New York and listening to um, the teacher say like there's primary foods and there's secondary foods and the secondary foods is what we put in our mouths but the primary foods are our spirituality our relationships our career like those those things are what, what 
what really feed us. And I went down this rabbit hole of what of relationships. What does it actually mean to be in healthy relationships with people? What does it actually mean to love myself? And through this journey, this 10 year, almost 11 year journey, it was, um, I learned that there's self maintenance, there's self care and there's self love. And I think self care is what we talk about a lot but it's not until we actually pull back and really understand what it actually means to love, period, right? To love ourselves and to love other people. And what does that mean? Um, and so I try to read everything I find about love, everything. Um, and um, women like Bell Hooks, I don't know if any of you are Bell Hook bell hooks fans but she led me down this huge path of, of love but i want to say that like um i feel like self-maintenance is things that we do you know like you know making sure we have enough water and those sorts of things i think self-care is a lot of what we were just talking about right self-care is when we like just feel it in our souls that it's just really good and it nourished us right i think self-love um, if you'll go with me on this, uh, self-love to me is nurturing ourselves in a more spiritual way or, or a personal way into growing up into the love that I believe um, one of you were talking about God's love, like the way that God sees us. And so I think that when I look at um, love, I have to ask myself, what does that actually mean, first of all? What words would I put around what it means to really love from a place of knowing, from a place that is not just saying no and learning how to say no, but when I wanna frame up love, what is it, what am I squarely looking at? Um, and then how do I give that to myself first? And so, the, and I think that we can love people even as we learn self-love, it's just the deeper we love ourselves, the deeper we can also love other people. Um, and I do agree, love is not selfish. Um, love strips away the ego. Um, and so we see people every day, all day saying, I love myself, I love myself. But what does that actually mean to really love yourself? Do you, are you honest with yourself? Do you offer yourself respect? Do you offer yourself trust mm -hmm. and care? Like these are the things that I think then lend itself to the way that we show up in love. And then there's the, the care part, like I'm caring for myself. Um, and so therefore the self care then is I'm doing all of these things, but the depth of love is um, I think, and, and what I have learned is a spiritual journey of nurturing yourself and growth. It's starting with, you know, 10 years ago, me, I didn't, I, I wouldn't say that I didn't know how to love 10 years ago, but I think it's been a journey of evolving into this, being that is getting closer and closer to what I believe, how God sees me and God sees people. Um, and so I think it is a spiritual journey more than it is anything else. I do think love is action. I think, of course we feel yep. it, but I think that love is, is the way that we are with each other. It's intentional and it is a choice. We, we can choose to love or we can choose not to love because if it was innate, we'd all be doing it and this world would not look like what it's looking like today. So I think that love is a responsibility that we hold and when we hold it for ourselves first and understand that when I love myself, there's no way I can treat another sister, another brother, another person in my community like this because of the love that I have for me. It wouldn't allow me to do that. So when people say I love myself, but then they go out and do all kinds of stuff, it's like, how deep is your love? And do you actually understand what it means to love? So down this rabbit hole, I go into learning these things and how to show up in love and in care and in maintenance, like all three of those things. But it was not until I started to peel back my understanding of actually what it even means to love um, that I was able to like sit with showing up that way for myself and like truly looking at myself and saying, yep, I, I am in a place where I love myself, but again, not from a place of ego, not from a place of, um, you know, selfishness, but from a place of like, I, I, I accept me for me. 
right? I can now look in the mirror and smile and say, keep going. Mm-hmm. We're not perfect at it. And that's why I said it's not, you know, I do love in real time. So as I'm like talking about love or teaching love or offering workshops on love, I'm still experiencing this in a very mm-hmm. real way, just mm-hmm. like everyone else, right? There are moments where I'm like, what am I doing? Am I, mm-hmm. am I like, I'm face down, tears, like, okay. And then what would love do? How would love what, how would God surround me with the embrace of love? How can I give that and offer that to myself? So it, it's easier for me to say, I'm not the sage on the stage, like I said before. Mm-hmm. I'm the guide on the side or your fellow traveler who just knows every morning I get up to do the work of people who need love, including myself. Um, mm-hmm. and so I love what you all said about self-care. Um, and then when we go deeper, it's what do we even mean when we say love? Like, what do we even mean by that? And I think that's where we start. And once we build on that and offer what we mean about that to ourselves and then to other people, I think that's where we get to when we talk about self-love. Mm. If I could Bravo. comment real quick. Bravo. Um, thank you for your clarity. You, you yes. gave three terms, self-maintenance, self-care and self-love and you, mm-hmm. and you clarified each and what you've done for me is, is clearly uh defined where i was for 20 years i was only in self-maintenance mm. i thank mm. you for that clarity absolutely absolutely i want to i want to piggyback on that blondell i i, I took some notes i, I ain't even <laughs> so <gonna. did> I. <laughs> I wrote some of those things down um and, and you made it so very clear on the three differences and and I think that's when we when we kind of talked about that and Jeanette was saying that I think those are the different evolutions those are the different stages that you probably were doing because it was so natural but you just didn't have the label for it you didn't Mm -hmm. you didn't have the saying for it and now that you put the label on it you can understand it now you can now say Mm -hmm. oh I'm in self-maintenance right now oh, maybe I need to move out of self-maintenance and go a little bit more into self-love. And that's 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 really a self-awareness type thing. Yes. And I love it. I love it. I, I loved it. Um, I, a part of one of my journeys um, also is, like you said, the spiritual part, Charmaine. Um, God had me really dig into the 1 Corinthians um, 13 and 4. And I think I'm saying, I might be saying it wrong, forgive me. <laughs> um, but love is, love is patient, love is kind, love is, you know, it goes on and on and on to all of these acronyms or these, 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 these sayings about love. And God told me to stop at the first one, period. Love is patient, period. That's it. Don't go no further. Don't go any further until you lo- know what love is patient. Look up what patient really means. Look up how you can be patient with yourself. Look up how you can really know what Mm. patient means. Long suffering. Suffering, yes. Long suffering. Will you allow God to love you to the nth degree, to correct Mm. you, to mold you, to shape you, to take this away, to add this to it, to tell you no you, we talk about telling other people no, but how about when God tells you no? Will you be patient enough to accept that for yourself and mm. know that that's God loving you? He's loving you through those corrective, those the, that chastisement. That's love. We don't know that that's love because we think that he's punishing us, but mm. all in all, he's giving us something that's more of what we can imagine. That's why I keep on saying imagine that's unfathomable the love that he has for us we don't dig into that part of God's love either we run from God's correction keep it 100% because sometimes it's uncomfortable (laughs) most times most of the time it's uncomfortable (laughs) but when you know that he's doing this because he loves you more than you can imagine more than you even know for yourself that's the stuff that you can sit in. That's the stuff that you can be quiet in. That's the stuff that you can say, not my will, God, your will be done. And if you love me enough, then you, I know you putting that seed in me so that I can sow it to somebody else. Mm-hmm. I can then sow it on good soul because you told me that I was good soul. I'm good soul, y'all. So that I'm telling you that that has been my mantra for the month of February. I am 
good soil because we 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 accepted all of that stuff of what mm. other people said about us. We accepted we accepted all the negative stuff. Oh, you ugly, you fat, you this, you you you're not intelligent. You you this. We accepted that. So now, wait a minute. God said, if you accepted all of the negative, how about let's now receive the good. Put the good on that now. Now receive what I say to you because everything I said about you is good. Everything is good. When mm. I made you, I made it all good. So now cancel out all that negative stuff that you chose to accept. Why not accept and, and know that you deserve all the good that I said that you are? You are good, soul. You I are like beautiful. You, you are like fearfully you. and wonderfully made. You are intelligent. You are wise. You are moldable. You are pliable. You are, you know, so now I just change it. I'm good soul. That's it. Like that. and, and love is patient, <laughs> period. I'll go no further. Be patient with yourself. Be mm. patient with what God is doing through you. Be patient so that you can, and then if you patient with yourself, you can then give somebody else some patience because patience another thing for me patience is grace give yourself some grace mm. give yourself some grace so when you can accept grace for you 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 can and then in turn give it to somebody else that i like that, that mantra that's I am. Regina, the mantra of i am good soil that's that's good that that phrase yeah. resonated with good. me and something yeah. else you said resonated with me too or actually it, it tied into what i feel like charmaine was saying about how do we define love? Yeah. Like, what's the definition of love? I mean, that stopped me in my tracks right there. I was like, yeah, because we, we use it all the time, yeah. but I think that it's not until we really, really, and, and take some time to settle with what it, what our definitions of love is. Right. And when I say from a spiritual place, um, so I, I talk to people from all different walks of life, all different backgrounds, right? And so, um, and I believe that love is a growing up. Like James Baldwin says, love does not begin and end the way we think it is. Love is a love is um, love is a growing up. Um, and so, um, love is a battle. Love is a war. Love is a growing up. Is what he said. Um, but I think that so I'm looking at these beautiful faces here. And I can speak to these beautiful place, sp faces, and I don't know who else is watching on Facebook Live, but I know being born as, as a Black female, uh, getting to first understanding love and then understanding that I'm worthy of it, period, right? And so I think that this journey, this evolution of evolving into love is not a destiny, I, I, it's a journey. So however long I am on this earth, I'm not thinking I'm going to reach that pinnacle moment where I no longer learn anything about love. I think it's, it's real time ever growing. Um, but I think that um, knowing that we're worthy of love, first of all, when we look at ourselves, the narratives that we have been told in the past um, and trying to show up in our full selves, um, I think, you know, was one of the bigger things that I had to also show myself some love by knowing that I was worthy of it, like acknowledging that I am just as worthy as the next man, but that man is also worthy or that woman is also worthy of that same love for themselves. Like just because I have love or, you know, I don't have the corner market on love. It is, it is for all of us and we can all experience it. So um, that's the other thing that I wanted to like, so the baseline is, what do we really understand and know about love? Like we use it all the time. And it's not just a one word, love is unconditional. Like what is love, right? So, um, and then like, I am worthy. I'm worthy of giving myself these things that I believe about love. And I think that's where we start with, with the way that we love ourselves um, and, and nurture each other. Because I think that love um, is not just nurturing our, ourselves, but it's nurturing other people in our lives. And what you're doing with good, good girlfriends is a nurturing place to be. And that's a loving place to be. So I think that love nurtures not just yourself, but it nurtures the people around you as well. We're intentional. That's intentionality. Yes. It's an will. Charmaine, yes, yes, you know, yes. It, it's, it, one thing that I thought about as you were talking and I thought love is unconditional. It doesn't have any conditions to it, right? I just, 
you know, um, and, and, you know, and I know the spiritual sense of agape love, eros love. I mean, I understand all of that. But when I think about love, there's no, you know, there's, I don't feel like I have any conditions on it. That's just something that I think about as a thought. When you talk about, when you ask the question or when you talked about what is love? What does love? And when I think about self-love, I may put conditions on myself. I may put guilt on myself. Mm. I may put parameters on myself. But if I believe that love is unconditional, then I don't have to put any of those things on it. So that's just a thought that came to my mind. So I yeah. have to say that the question of what, the, how do you define love struck me also. And like Cara, it did stop me dead in my tracks. And so I'm like, what, what? Oh, wait a minute. It just, so when I, um, you know, was thinking about that question and not that you wanted us to define it now, but my first thought was what I experienced right? So the love of my parents, my mother, right? You know, that's how I defined love. And, you know, everyone had different experiences, but I like to think mine was the best, <laughs> right? Um, and, but then as you mature, at, you know, I, I'm sitting here reflecting and thinking and listening to everything everyone is, everything everybody is saying, then it becomes a more personal internal experience, mm. right? Because you can't look you know, that's when you're a child, like the Bible, you know, says, right? So your, ex your, your definition of what you know of love is what you experience and from the outside world, beginning with your parents, your mother. But as time, and depending on what that experience is, it might not be a, a, a healthy definition. Mm -hmm. So that's when it becomes, like, as I'm listening to everyone, that's when it becomes a more personal, spiritual, deeper journey. Um, and, and the journey it continues on and on and on. So I just, I just wanted to make that point. I, you know, Jeanette, I love I think it. Those, are, those are good points, but sometimes you think about, um, you know, you encounter others or you're in a relationship and um, we were loved differently as children. We had different parents. And so then you get into this relationship and all of a sudden you're trying to understand what went wrong. Um, and maybe because the love that you experienced and the other person didn't, and it's, right. you know, and, and for you, it's kind of not working, you know, you're trying to, and a lot of it is shaped from, you know, our experiences of growing up, especially when you get to those first love relationships or the first love or, you know, whatever, even later in, in life and relationships, you know, and so, and um, Charmaine, I would, you know, maybe ask you or, you know, how do you help people unpack that? Um, understanding or getting to sure. the point so that because sometimes um, to Regina's point there's unconditional love but sometimes you know there's that um, you know what's that you know sort of that hard not love that you have mm -hmm. to um, you have to let it go or you have to say no because you do love a person mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's difficult for us to see that or to be able to unpack that especially if you're in a relationship yeah Absolutely. Absolutely. I think um, <laughs> you all have said a lot here. Um, I think, so what I do know for sure is that our love is shaped by what we experience in our childhood, right? There's no way it can't be. So um, we, it, but like you said before, when we were a child, we spoke as a child, we acted as a child, but we, as we grow up, we leave those childish ways and thoughts behind. Some people don't. Right. Some people don't know how to. Um, we weren't taught love in school. We weren't necessarily taught it specifically at home. Uh, we may have been shown it in ways, but no one was like, let's talk about this love thing, right? And so now when I say I love you to my family and my friends, I know exactly what I'm saying to you. I know exactly what I mean by that. And I know when I'm not showing up in that way. And I got to then go back and be like, so what? why can't I love in this way, right? So there are things that can that can stop us from, from even having good relationships with people. Um, but so unpacking love, I think 
the first thing we need to do is sit down and really consider what love means to us in a very real way. And I think it's not until we do that. Um, like, and then um, I, I'm trying to pack in like 11 years of my learning <laughs> into this conversation, but um, there's a lot of tears around, uh, a lot of joy, a lot of tears, a lot of things that happen in my understanding of love that causes us to, I think first and foremost is when we are ready to actually look at love and be real with love and to, to allow love to show up for us. Um, it's a, it's a, you have to be brave, right? You have to yes. be brave to yes. say, yes. you know, all of the ways that we need to show up in love is not so airy fairy. Yes. It is not so, um, Disney and they lived yes. happily ever after. It's not all of the things that we see on TV. It's actually real work. Yes. Um, and it is dying of yourself. And it's also asking, mm. I think love is asking us to expand our hearts in ways that the world is not doing. Mm. Um, and that's <clears throat> why I'm so passionate about it is because but there's a rallying cry. We need change in the world. We need change in the world. Change starts with us. Yes. And until we die of our egos and ourselves around lots of things, um, because we point out, we point out at everyone, but when we point in and allow ourselves on a daily basis to give, a, to give ourselves that love or that care, uh, maintenance um, as well, there's a, there's, um, I think love is, is a journey to healing and freedom. Mm. We have things that we need to heal in ourselves, but also in humanity and the ways in our community, we have, we have a lot of healing to do. And I think love is the only thing that brings us to that real, real love, not just the talking, the, all of those things. And I think there's a freedom. I feel a freedom around um, myself because I can express myself in loving ways, even when other people don't understand it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, even, even when I'm like, trying to show up the best way that I can. There's a freedom in knowing that. Um, so I think as we look at love, define it for ourselves, like get really clear on it um, and then move in a space of like being intentional because I think love is intention. So we have to be intentional about it. But we also allow ourselves, someone said, grace. We're not gonna do this perfectly. Like I said, I'm living this real time. Mm -hmm. um, and so while, uh, I am talking about these things. I'm also living this, this thing in real time. Um, Adrian can tell you, there've been many times where I'm like, I'm sorry, y'all, I'm gonna take a month and I need to go in. And I, I can't engage because I need to, like there's things happening that I need to just heal my heart or work on things um, because I do feel like this is so important. And I feel like this is important, especially in the conversation of the Black community, because I love us so much. And I love, I mean, I love the world, the humanity in general, but I think, you know, just all of the things that we have been fed around love, I just want to just do a warm embrace of love, even to just us, even on this call. And so I think that it is, um, I don't want to give any ideas that this is some lofty, you know, here do this and this is love and here do that this is love i think there's a there's a base for for this and then there's a building up of it and i still think that we're in a place of love now right i didn't think that i didn't know how to love like i said 10 years ago but um i love the song how deep is your love um pj morton has a, a rendition of it that i really like but it's deeper now it's deeper now um and it allows me to um to really show up in, in ways that I didn't know that I could before. Mm -hmm. I have to say that um, I, in my own evolution in this love journey, I have found that it wasn't until I was willing to be vulnerable um, that I was able to experience love deeper and um, give more, be more loving. So like you said, it wasn't that I wasn't loving and it wasn't that I, you know, that I didn't love and that I wasn't being loved, it was, but it wasn't until I realized that part of um, the journey was being vulnerable. And I find that, you know, especially for black women, I would say, or at least for myself, 
that took some time. Like you don't want to be, you know, generally vulnerable because we have so much against us a lot. Anyway, we don't want to allow any extra um, hurt or, you know, trauma or whatever, but it wasn't until I was willing not to say that it involved that, but it wasn't until I was willing to accept that that may be a part of the journey that um, I experienced a deeper level of love and even self-love. I mean, that was part of the self-love journey for me as well, so. I love that you said that because I think vulnerability is a big thing, right? Um, being vulnerable with ourselves to, li- to really look at ourselves in the mirror and be vulnerable, be vulnerable, to, be, be vulnerable enough to be honest mm-hmm. with who we are and how we are and how we feel um, is, is one of the, a big thing in, in learning how to love ourselves. Um, and, it, and, and then we can come from a real place, right? It's only when we show up in an, a real authentic, vulnerable way um, that we can show up for others the same way. Um, and also being vulnerable is, is um, it's a personal thing, but then being safe around people who can take your vulnerability. Yes, 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 um, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> Because it does just because we've learned to be vulnerable does not mean that we show everybody our vulnerability because we're all at different places. Some people can take that and not know what to do with it or mm-hmm. or do something bad with it. So I think it's a it's a learning too of who who we are safe with and when it is okay to be vulnerable. You mentioned several words which really tug at my heart that I you know, growing up, I had to, well, I guess college and later learned that there is no prince that knocks at your door. So forget the Disney scenarios. And um, uh, you, you mentioned the word lofty, but you also said we do, we, we um, will not, we don't have to do self-love perfectly. And all of those points are underscores. Um, I want to share this as food for thought and, and maybe an additional experience you may want to have. There is an eight, eight part series called Modern Love, uh, which is based on a New York Times column of love essays. Mm-hmm. And they, they, they've taken eight of those gazillion essays and converted them to film. Uh, and, and they cover eight different types of, of love experiences among, amongst uh, men and women. So it's exceedingly well done. It, 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 it encapsulates all of what you've spoken about. And um, it, if you all get a chance, go to, uh, now I don't know if it's on Netflix or- I um, Netflix, I think it is Netflix. Yeah. Netflix, Netflix. Uh, but the stories are so riveting. And there's somebody in your life, if not yourself, where you did not live through and survive one of those types of modern loves. So if you get a chance, um, take a look, see, it's a great, great follow-up and re- really punctuate what our special guest is talking about. Yes, I think I've read a little bit about that a couple of years ago, um, for sure. I, I think I remember that. Um, and you know, the other thing that I wanna say is when I first started on this journey of love, um, I went to what I thought was easy, which was romantic love, right? But I knew that that really wasn't what I wanted to do because I feel like love is is expansive, and so it's, and and love will call us to continue to grow in our hearts if we're really leaning into the idea of how to love ourselves and each other. It really will call us to a greater love, more than you expect, and it is great. But um, I think the the world has a corner market when we say love on just romance or just family. Um, and we say self-love, but again, um, I, my, I hope that we continue to expand in this conversation of love that is more inclusive of community, Mm -hmm. ourselves, our family, our friends, community, um, and that it is, it invites everyone in without saying you can come in only if you look this way, speak this way, act this way, believe this way, think this way. You know what I mean? I think yes. love does not call us to be exclusive. Love calls mm-hmm. us to love because not despite. Mm-hmm. And so, but it's also a learning. It's a growing up in that, right? Yes. We've been taught, all of us in this world have been taught to be exclusive in some way, shape or form, right? Yeah. They don't fit into this. 
So therefore they don't, they don't deserve the, to, to love in the way that we, you know, we dole out love as if we have uh, the right to do these things. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is love is an ability. We have the ability to love. And I think we miss that. We, we miss that we are able able beings, we have the ability to love. It is not something that is only important to us, like here's your love and I can also take that love away from you. And then we're defined, we define ourselves based on the love that people either give to us or take away from us. And I think that's the other thing, like just knowing my ability to do this, I am able to do this. And it is not because someone is giving it to me or I'm not defined by that. And I have the ability to love myself and I have the ability to actually love other people. Um, and I don't think that love is a carrot that you say, well, if you don't behave this way, then I'm taking this love from you. It's not manipulative. Like we, you know, we had, I think all of these things I had to break down um, in my behavior, right? And then I had to think about all the ways that were stopping me from loving myself and how to get through that, like guilt or shame or fear or criticism or resentment. And we could just go the list, the roadblocks of things that we must address on this journey of love to get to the core of how we truly can love ourselves, how we really can just look in the mirror and say, yes, that happened. And I love myself despite that or because of that. You know, it, it, it's, it's a growing in your heart um, past situations and circumstances that happen that can stop us, right? That can stop us from loving ourselves when we hold ourselves to being perfect. Um, I would not be here in this conversation with you if I thought I had to be perfect at this thing to do it. What I will tell you is I will never stop trying to do the right thing when it comes to love. But I have fallen many times and said, I'm not doing this right. And I've had to make phone calls of um, and asking forgiveness and sitting with people. Forgiveness is one of the bigger things. Mm. I'm rereading this book called The Book of Forgiving by Desmond Tutu and his mm. daughter. I think her name is, is pronounced Umfo Tutu. Mm. Uh, and they talk about this journey of forgiveness and how to forgive yourself and other people. And it is not a passive thing, right? We've learned that forgiveness can be really passive. And it is, and we say forgive, we, if we forgive people, we free ourselves. But really, it's a, it's an act just like love is. Um, and so... Um, What's the name of the book again? It's called Book of Forgiving by Desmond Tutu and Mpho Tutu. And Mpho is a M-P-H-O to to it's his daughter um it's it's taken me a long time to get through that book because it's it's some heavy stuff forgiveness is not easy forgiveness is not something that we can just say you know i think as black people we have always taught well if someone comes and shoots our the members of our church we say we forgive you but there's an amendment there's things that need to happen to have true forgiveness and to honor our hearts and to honor our true um feelings right? We stuff our feelings, be strong, stay strong, you know, just forgive. But uh, it's a loving ourselves is when we forgive people in a way that is truly healing. And it's not, it's not easy. It's actually addressing what Cara talked about, the vulnerable places, the wounds and the things that have hurt us that now need to be healed from a place of true forgiving. And that forgiveness doesn't always mean that relationships go back. Yeah. To the same it can also say that with this relationship must end but i forgive you it can be all of those things right and so i think if i just want to i just want to throw in there that if anyone has not seen our good good girlfriends discussion on forgiveness a while back you should check it out because we had it and just like charmaine said a very intense discussion about what the well the power of forgiveness but also the process of forgiveness so mm -hmm. <laughs> please go check that out this head yes. thrust in there show me yes so that's just i'm just saying that was a part of my journey but i will check it out too um i am i think you know i'm a, a constant learner i have books all over the place that i'm starting and finishing and going to the next thing but um as you can tell i'm really passionate about it but not just for myself i want healing for all of us I want, um, I want us to be free um, and I'm an advocate for that. And I will use my life 
uh, to do that as much as I can um, because I I feel like there's there's it's time like why you know we we need to continue to move forward but I think that love is going to be the way to be do it and not just in name only and in like you know kumbaya love mm-hmm. it's let's get down to the business of love amen I I I, I agree wholeheartedly Charmaine thank you for that because Another thing that love does for me, it takes me out of that box of even saying that I'm a Christian. I don't even go there no more. I, I take that label off and say, I am love. Because if you really read the scriptures, if you really read the word and not just read the words on the page, but if you become the book, then you'll really know what love means and what God meant for love. He said, love is the more excellent way. And when you say that, and then when you end up with the other scriptures that says, after uh, love counsels out the law, that's where you take off the, the limitations. Like you said, that's where you let the inclusive come in because it's no longer about the law. It's no longer whether I... I, I bow three times. It's no longer about whether I go to church and, and, and read, read you this scripture and, and, and throw this book at you. No, it's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. It's really taking the limits off of it all. Like you said, and being love, I'm with you, Charmaine. I, if, if it's any way that I can volunteer, I can be, a, I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm on that journey. I'm so grateful for that journey because I've seen the other side. I've seen the other um, destructive side of not wanting to live, not loving myself enough to want to live. I've been Mm -hmm. there. I've been so deep into depression that all I saw was darkness in me. All I saw that I wasn't worthy. I wasn't worthy. And God took all of that, excuse me if I get excited, because he took that away and he gave me my joy back to love me, to know that he loves me unconditionally more than I can even imagine or think. He gave me back my life to live. And that's a beautiful thing to be free in that. And I'm so grateful for it. So I thank you. I thank you, Charmaine, for for reminding me of that. I know that journey and I'm not being conceited or boastful. I know that journey for myself. I've experienced it and I'm so grateful for it. So I I just wanted to share that. Thank you. I'm grateful for that too. Thank you so much for sharing your heart. Absolutely. I'm with you on everything you said. And and we have been there before. I just wrote my um, blog article that I shared with Adrian called Unstoppable Love. And I shared, um, I shared it with my family first because I didn't want them to go, you know. But even during this journey, there was a moment in my life where I felt so low that I was like, I just need to give up. And then I realized what unstoppable love is. And unstoppable love says, keep going, even in your darkest moments. Unstoppable love says, you've got this. Unstoppable love says, you're doing great. Unstoppable. I just wrote what unstoppable love meant. And I don't want you all to stop in your love. Um, yeah. You don't have to be perfect at this, but the fact that you are doing something what's revolutionary is, is loving. Love is actually revolutionary. And when you truly love in a revolutionary way, it changes hearts and minds. It changes you. It changes you in ways that you didn't even think. And it allows for peace, healing, freedom, all the things that you've been so yeah. wanting um, and so I think that it's a beautiful thing when we can offer that to each other. It's a beautiful thing for us to offer that to the pe- people in our lives. And like I said, it's it's freeing for me when I do say now I love you. I know what I mean yeah. when I say that I love you. I know exactly what I mean. Yes. I did not know that before. Mm-hmm. I didn't know. Yeah. I, I, I would say it and I knew that I felt that meant I, care, I cared for you. Um, I care deeply for you. Um, but it did not necessarily meant that I was loving you, right? Um, so, um, and again, we show up in love, not just in feelings, but in actions. It's more about what you do than what you say. Always. Absolutely. And so, 
um, as I look at your beautiful faces, I'm like, that this is a beautiful thing. And I think I always say, I, I appreciate the people that, um, I, that crossed my path because I believe that we're all just walking each other home. Like one day we will not be here, but we're walking each other home. And I appreciate the people that are helping walk me home mm -hmm. and that I'm walking them home. Mm -hmm. We're just, we're just walking home. And sometimes home is getting to that deeper place of who we really are and who we're meant to be. It's not, it's, I don't mean just death, right? Like we'll get yeah. there too, yeah. but we're walking back to the essence of who we really are and who we were supposed to be. Um, so I'm grateful for all of my interactions of love because yeah. we really are walking each other home. Amen. Love I like that. So do I. So do I. Love, 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 love that. Woo! That was awesome. <laughs> wow. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, I that. think what struck me is um, what um, Charmaine has said and Bernita, she was talking, and it is truly a journey. It mm -hmm. really is. Mm -hmm. It's a journey. We're all at different places and stages, but the fact that we have each other along the journey is just loving. Let me just yeah. say for me, having um, this new group of good, good girlfriends, my village, um, you know, Blondell and, and Jeanette, who've known me long, you know, sister, sister, sisterhood is love to me um, mm -hmm. in so many ways. And so it is just part of the growth in our journey. And it really is a loving experience. Yeah, and we nurture that, right? We continue yeah. to nurture that. Wow. Amen. Mm. Well, I just, every, every time you say freeing, I just have to share this story. Every time you say freeing, and I know that um, self-love and what we're talking about is our topic is self-love. And at the core of that, we were talking about love. And you mentioned that oftentimes people think of romantic love, but I'll never forget. And um, I wasn't married at the time, but I had a very close girlfriend who um, got married and in her remarks at her wedding, I'll never forget, she said that um, when she told people that she was getting married, that they were like, oh, wow, you're giving up your freedom. And she said just the opposite. I feel mm. free now that I am married. And it hit me that, I mean, she's been married or she was married 20 years ago, I think it's been 20 years, yeah. And, um, but that hit me because I was like, yeah, people always say, when you, um, you know, when you get married, yeah, you're giving up your freedom, but if you're getting married and it's God, God ordained or, you know, ordained um, marriage, that's freeing. Mm -hmm. So uh, it just kept hitting me when you said, uh, when you kept talking about being free, um, Charmaine, to, when you're, you really give love that you're, it's freeing, that just really hit me there about that, so. Yeah, yeah. what's beautiful about freedom is when we walk into any relationship already free, already knowing from a depth of love mm -hmm. um any you know it's, it's funny when i'm in teaching in schools uh it's really cute when i was in uh, teaching a, a group of fourth graders a little bit about love and i said who's in a relationship of course it's like one or two i got i got a girlfriend <laughs> i'm like no we're all in relationships with people right we're in relationships with the people in our lives we don't call it relationships but we are and what would the world be like if we came in being more free, be more free in ourselves, be more free and uh, in our love, and then in, like entering spaces, entering friendships, entering love relationships, and, you know, re-entering relationships with people, with our children, from a from a freer place, a, a place of freedom. Right. Mm -hmm. So I love that you, you gave that story because she was already free mm -hmm. and felt her own freedom. And, and it wasn't, it, she knew that if she continued, I'm sure, I don't know who she is, but I think there's something beautiful about, you know, engaging in friendships or relationships with people where it's not a, where you're free. Let me just say like that, mm -hmm. like, you know, where I'm going with that. When you're not free, everything is in the way, you know, you've got mm -hmm. your free in things that, mm -hmm. that are, could, could hinder or hurt the relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think love brings a lot of self-awareness. Now mm -hmm. we know ourselves a little bit more, like when I'm reacting to things, I'm like, well, wait a minute, why did I react mm -hmm. that way? Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, because of this and now let me get real with mm -hmm. it wasn't that that person did such and such it was because and then I got to get real with that thing right yeah. so again yeah. I said love let's believe the ego go and you've not met her my ego is fierce right she wants to protect yeah. me. 
that's why she shows up. But I need to let my ego know I'm good. Like this is good for us. This is good for us to not show up in a way that is uh, hurtful to other people. Wow. Yeah. Now, Charmaine, this was incredible. I mean, it was. You have to come back some more. You can't be a one and done on this one. This was oh. really good. Yes. But at this point in um, our lives we always highlight an african-american female-owned business and you are our highlighted business for the evening so we would love for you to tell us about your business and um how we can reach out to you and connect with you and all that good stuff sure um thank you thank you thank you so much i um really enjoyed being here um I'm surprised I did not tear up and cry and known to be a crybaby these days. <laughs> um, but I, I'm so honored to be here. Um, my company, like I said, I did not start it 10 years ago. I went down the rabbit hole of trying to understand and learn love for my own healing. And, um, and you know, it's I was trying to exercise for the external part, but there was some inner work, some inner size that need to happen too, so I can be, you know, a better person inside and out. But um, Woo Forever, um, what I do is I offer love shops. They're called, they're love workshops on self-love. Um, it's a four week um, session uh, that helps you define love. We go, we, you discover roadblocks that stop you from loving yourself and then how to nurture that love. Um, and so uh, during the love shops that I, I offer them once a week um, for four weeks and there's love work. So the reason why I don't offer them back to back is because there's love work, which is love homework that you do for the week um, as a part of this journey. And it is not intended to teach you all things love in four weeks, but it is intended to help inspire more love in your journey. So that is one of the things that I do. I promote more and better love, as you can see with my Scrabble um, back there. Um, so a lot of what I do is the love shops. I do speak. Um, do public speaking. I was speaking more when pre-COVID, um, but now all of the sessions are virtual, um, and they're interactive. Um, they're they're interactive, and um, so I invite a lot of love in the space. So so what what you see here is what you get. <laughs> a lot of what you will get just in a deeper, um, much deeper conversation around love. Um, I have shirts that say love more, love better, even though this one says North Star love. My, I feel like my North Star is love. Um, and uh, I do sometimes do one-on-one -on -one sessions, uh, depending on if people really wanna like have a conversation about something uh, in particular. But again, I really, um, I, I don't like to be, like I said, the stage, the, the sage on the stage because I think it is really important to walk with people on this journey, especially for something as delicate and as serious as love. And I, um, I don't believe in pedestals because I think there's always someone looking up and someone always looking down and there can't be a real relationship happening eye to eye. And so whenever people say expert, I'm like, mm, I'm just like a fellow traveler with you um, because I want people to show up in a very real way with me as I show up in a very real, real way with them. So um, while I love to speak, I also love to listen too. So um, I do offer um, journaling sessions um, as well um, this month for the next four weeks, starting next week. I um, the journaling sessions are on Sunday mornings. Uh, they'll probably move after that, but it's specifically on love. So we we have a, an hour session and I prompt um, the journaling, the writing around topics of love, um, just to kind of inspire and get your thoughts going about deeper love and that sort of thing. So journaling, love shops, uh, t-shirts. Um, Website. Woo forever, W O O, the word forever.com, or love more, love better.com, which is the same. They all go to the same thing. Okay. And Charmaine, you. you can sign up for when you go to the website, you can sign up for the love shops, or do they sign up for the love shops? Time? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the love shops, I just put up the new set. Um, so, um, and you'll see testimonials up there of some people who have gone through it um, already. Um, I highly encourage you to 
you and your fellow girlfriends or your family. Um, I do private group sessions for family bonding experiences, girlfriend bonding experiences, um, because some people who have gone through my love shop have asked if they could do it just with their family because they felt that it was so impactful for them that it would be an experience that their family should also be a part of. So I've, I also offer private bonding sessions with groups of people as well. Um, so yes, you can look on my website and get all of those details. Um, Is that Charmaine that. with an S or a C? C, C-H-A-R-M-A-I-N-E. So the website is the best way to contact you? Is that the contact? Yeah. Number? I'm sure sure. it's in our Facebook Live. So I put wooforever.com or love mm -hmm. or lovebetter.com. Those, that's the best way to reach out. To yeah, or, or you can email me. It's fine. Okay, what's your email address? Charmaine at wooforever.com. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, so I, you know, I hope to see you all there as we do this journey together. <laughs> um, I do think that this is a space for men and women, um, for sure, um, to just start this, this healing and freedom for all of us. So thank you. Thank I'm you. just gonna say this was amazing. Yes, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> That's thank it you was. so much. Yes. I have to say that you know, um, I'm, I, I, this, I think I've been. This is what I've wondered about my whole life, by the way. So this is not something that happened ten years ago. I've always wondered about love, even as a kid. Um, and I think Bell Hooks once said it, um, like she remembers it was it was the absence of love that made her realize mm -hmm. how important love really is. And so when we feel the absence of it, then we know how important it really is to give and have love. Um, and so uh, that has always stuck with me too. But I always wonder, like, if we're such loving people, why did slavery happen? Why did this happen? I was a curious kid. Like, help me figure out this love thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it was because I saw beautiful love between my grandparents first uh, that set me on this journey of finding more people like them. Um, there's a poet that says that she was tired of evil in the world. So she found heavenly spots and showed other people. <laughs> and so I thought, I want to find these heavenly places and show other people. And the heavenly places are people, right? So I, mm -hmm. while I wish I could show the world, my grandfather who died in 1999, uh, who I adored and just treasured within my heart. My grandmother just passed away last Sunday and we, re we lay her to rest. Yeah. It was their love that struck that sparked this so my honoring her and him is to carry this with with me as a way to say this is how this is your legacy moving forward because the love you instilled in me is it's going to keep going right so as we as i move towards this love i remember the heavenly spots that they first showed me and now i can look for other places and hopefully i'm um, I know I'm one of the heavenly spots, right? Mm. They hope, mm. that, that's my intention is to mm. be also a heavenly spot and not an evil place mm. where people uh, can say that. I'm sure I can speak for all of us that we offer our sincere condolences in the last oh, week. Yes. But yes. I also want to say that last, just last week on our Good Good Girlfriends chat, we talked about uh, finding your gift and I, I have to say you found your gift. Yeah. <laughs> if, you haven't, if you haven't watched that episode, you might want to check it out. But, so forgiving and finding clear. your gift. Got it. It's clear that you have found your gift. You are truly gifted in sharing. And thank you for sharing your gift with us this evening. So thank you for allowing me to be here. Really. Please come back. We yes, have, thank we, you. I would love to. We hope that you and Adrian will that you yes. get your last visit with the good good girlfriends. We are we are here every Thursday and you know we try to post our topic in advance, but um we'd love to have you any Thursday that you have our contact information now it never changes. So you can always come in whenever you like. So we thank you so much. Anyone want to say anything before we go? I just wanted to say what you saw and heard today is the authentic Charmaine. It's uh -huh. not, this was not done for show. It was not done because she was invited to the good girl girlfriends. This is who she is. And so, I mean, I know uh -huh. I've called her, I've texted her in the middle of the night, like it's 1235. Are you up? 
And she's like, yes, call me. And so this is the authentic Charmaine who has um, everything she said today is who she is. And so um, I am, this is, she's, she's spoken for me many times at a school event. And, um, you know, we've heard her at different events, but today I just saw the authentic and true Charmaine. And so for you, Charmaine, I just want to say the best is yet to come. You, oh. This is your gift um, to, to go forward and prosper. And I saw it today and I just want to continue to support you. And, you know, I know personally a lot of things that's going on in your life. You know the same for me, but I just want to encourage you and thank you for the work that you continue to do as we continue to know and grow and learn about love. So love yeah. you. Love you. And I know what I mean when I say that too. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> love you too, sis. Love you too. Thank you. Paul. And I, I've encountered Charmaine so many times in the last, how many years have you all been lying, sisters? Six, seven Something like that. Know, whatever number of years and and she's always been the same she she gives love and shows love all the time like i i mean you all have a lot of line sisters but the fact that i have charmaine's number in my phone <laughs> it means that you know it's because she is very loving so thank you for that so i appreciate both of you all being here tonight thank and, you again yes <laughs> That we will say, we hope that we have blessed someone. That's always our goal, that we have blessed someone tonight. And this conversation always truly blesses me, but we do hope that someone will find this to be a blessing. So we hope everyone has a wonderful evening and we will see you next week. We don't know our topic yet, but don't worry. It's going to be a good one. Actually, we do know our topic. Oop, I oh. take that back. Next week, we will have an accountant on to discuss um, what we need to be aware of as we're preparing our taxes this year. So um, mm. come back because it's gonna be our financial topic for the month. We're going to talk about things you should know or any, you know, any type of tax questions, um, any kind of questions that a CPA could answer, we'll have her available next week. So come back next week, join our conversation and bring your questions. All right, have a great week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>